So today we're going to be talking about the in-mount stealth scan. <clears throat> I'm sure if you guys have done anything kind of related to cybersecurity, ethical hacking, anything like that, you're familiar with NMAP, and you've probably heard of the stealth scan. And the reason that it's called a stealth scan is because it's possible that whoever you're trying to connect to doesn't log this event because the handshake doesn't fully complete. You send a send, they send a send act, then you hit a reset, like, no thank you, I don't want to connect. So, go ahead and show you the syntax that gets used for this. You'll do nmap, we'll do dash s, lowercase and capital S. Uh, you can use, you can see here on the screen I have T4, it's just to speed this up for you guys. And the IP address that you see here is a uh, metal exploitable machine that I have on my network just for testing purposes. So I'll go ahead and run this, let you see kind of how it happens here. Also, you will need sudo on this because sudo is required to run this particular in-map scan. Let's hit enter. Enter my password. Okay, so that's pretty quick. Like I said, this is a locally hosted metasploitable machine. Here's all the ports that it found open and reports that back to us. So pretty simple, easy to do. So let me show you why a lot of hackers nowadays don't use this stealth scan because blue teams are getting better they're kind of catching up trying to, trying to level out the curve a little bit so they can keep up with the uh, bad hackers that are out there so let me clear this let me pull up wireshark here and i'll run these side by side so you guys can see how this happens minimize this a little bit Okay, on my Wireshark instance, I'm going to select ETH0, because that's what I'm running with my Kali machine, my virtual machine right now. I'll go ahead and start my capture. I'll go. So I'm going to just hit up on this, pull up that same command again. I'll go ahead and hit enter to run. You'll see it light up here on my Wireshark. This is the same metal splitter machine here. Again, the ports that are open, servers that they're running. So I'll go ahead and stop this on Wireshark. I don't need this anymore, so I'll put this here and I'll bring this up front for you guys so you can see it. Okay, so with Wireshark, any blue teamer that's, I don't know, kind of worth their salt, I guess you should say, should be able to pick up a uh, in-map scan against their network. Um, as long as you know kind of what to filter by and what to look for. So we're going to change this. You notice on our terminal some of the ports that were open 21 22 23 like all these i'm just going to filter and say port 22 just to kind of narrow down what you guys see to make this a little more simpler for explanation so i'm going to do tcp dot port i'm going to set this to port 22 that narrows it down okay and you'll see up top here you'll see sin you'll see synac and you'll see reset so the sin is what you send initially this is the response from the Metasploitable machine back to me. So you see Metasploitable is 192.168.88.129. It's responding back to my machine, which is 192.168.88.136. So here's it responding. Then me sending the reset switch back to the Metasploitable machine to say, no, thank you. I don't want to connect. So seems kind of harmless. Doesn't seem like it would be much of a point, but it actually is when you're looking at the wire. So we'll come down here. You'll see transmission control protocol. If you have uh, Wireshark up and running, if you want to kind of go along with this, you can scan um, scanme.nmap.org. Um, totally legal. They have it set up for that reason. Again, I'll put that on the screen here for you guys so you can see that. You'll do scanme.nmap.org. You can scan against this with any nmap scan you want to do. If you want to, like I said, follow along and run Wireshark. Um, most of your virtual machines will have Wireshark built in for your Kali Linux. Or you can install it even on a Windows machine. So so once you have this open and you have Wireshark up, it'll probably look like this. It'll just be kind of closed off. Just open your transmission control protocol drop down arrow here. And then what we're wanting to look at is the window size. So you'll see here our window size is 1024. And then you'll see that the TC option, TCP option, maximum segment size is 1460 bytes. So in the real world, this is really unusual 
for this size. Reason being is I'm limiting what size of information I can receive to a very small amount, this 1024 bytes. I'm telling you, or I'm telling the computer like, hey, send me maximum is 1,460 bytes. However, I, my receive buffer is only set to 1024. So almost 100% of the time, if you see TCP sends that has a window of 1024, it's Nmap. So this is kind of like a big red flag, like, hey, Nmap's being run against your network. So seeing that you can find this, this is one of the main reasons a lot of hackers don't run a stealth scan anymore, because honestly, it's not that stealthy. So on top of having this window size, can you see this? maximum second size here. You can drag this window 1024 up to your search bar in your filter. I'm gonna hold it over here. Here we're gonna do and select it. And you'll see it narrows it down to just this one TCP CN. And you see it's 1024, 1460. If I take off the port, I can narrow down what my entire scan run. So so everything you see here, the TCP window size value is 1024. So this is all in map running. And the things you see here is the ports it's running against. 443, port 80, 8080, 80, port 22 that we just ran, 139, 445. So any of these that we click on is going to have the same window size. Let's do 53, 1024. Boom. It's just, like I say, guys, it's a big red flag that NMAP's being run against your network. This is just one way to capture it across the wire. Like I said, don't get used as much anymore. A lot of people are just running uh, the full TCP connect option. And a lot of times they're doing proxies and things too. So even if you capture their IP address that it's coming from, it's not really where they're at. They're running, like I said, through a proxy, through a Tor network most of the time. So just a little information for you guys on NMAP. Thank you guys for watching.